In this lecture, we'll explore Compute Engine. The Google Compute Engine allows you to create virtual machines. A virtual machine is like a physical hardware server, but running in the cloud using something called a hypervisor. This is run on larger shared servers and lets Google isolate resources and sell them on a per server basis with different resource combinations. VMs provide the most flexibility as you can sign up thousands of servers with various sizes and scale them from the GUI, command line or patch jobs. A single VM instance can now have up to 160 CPUs and 3.75 gigabytes of RAM. This is as of June 2019. When it comes to storage, you can have local SSDs, these are solid state drives, block storage, and they are physically attached to the server hosting the VM instance. This offers very low latency and SSDs can be up to 3 terabytes. Network storage or hard disk drives can be up to 64 terabytes in size and they're attached to VMs as persistent disks. Instances can be grouped into pools and a global load balancer can be configured to distribute load across pools to get better performance. All this infrastructure is maintained by Google engineers behind the scenes. Each VM instance belongs to a project. When you're creating a VM, there are a lot of options to choose from. This can include the physical region and zone it belongs to, the operating system, machine type, and container support. A project can have up to five virtual private clouds, but each VM instance can only belong to one VPC instance in the same VPC. A project can have up to five virtual private clouds, but each VM instance can only belong to one VPC. Instances in the same VPC can communicate locally. This is the life cycle of a VM instance. When a new instance is created, it's at the provisioning stage where resources are being allocated. Then goes through staging where it boots up and goes into running. Now if a user makes a request to stop or there is a failure, it goes into the stopping mode where it tries to end any running processes gracefully through terminating. An instance group is a collection of VM instances that you can manage as a single entity. There are two types, managed and unmanaged. Managed groups have a lot of features like high availability, healing, scaling, and auto updates. Unmanaged groups need to be manually managed by the user you will have to manually add remove instances and do the load balancing yourself. As we discussed before, each compute engine VM can only belong to one VPC. It can have one primary internal IP address, one external IP address, but many secondary IP addresses. To communicate with the internet or devices in a different VPC, you must use the instance's external IP address. There are many options you can mix and match when it comes to configuring storage for your VMs. For example, there are differences in performance, data redundancy, latency, max capacity, and cost. Persistent disks are durable network storage devices that your instances can access like physical disks, desktop, or a server. SSDs are a lot faster and provide low latency but cost more. Cloud storage buckets are the most flexible, scalable, and durable storage option for virtual machine instances. This is the best option when latency and throughput are not a priority and when you must share data easily between multiple instances or zones. Now let's go ahead and create a Compute Engine instance. In this demo, we'll learn how to create a compute VM machine. So we're back here at our Google Cloud Platform dashboard. If this is your first time, make sure you have your billing set up 
and you're selecting the correct part project so click to down here and you can create a new project or select an existing one in my case I'm gonna choose compute demo make sure the correct project is selected and now we go to our navigation menu go to compute and compute engine click on this this opens the dashboard for our VM instances currently there are no VM instances in this project so let's go ahead and create one by clicking on create so this brings us to the page to create a VM so here on the left we have three options we can create a new VM from scratch we can create one from a template or we can choose something from a marketplace choosing something from a marketplace is deploying a ready-to-go solution such as a LAMP stack or even uh, a WordPress application or a specifically pre-configured machine. So in this case we're just going to create a new VM machine from scratch. So on the right hand pane the first thing is to create a name. So just call it VM1 100 and we can choose the region and the zone and the machine type so we can choose how many CPUs how much RAM we want so we can choose a 2 CPU 7.5 gigabyte RAM machine and we can choose if we want to deploy this in a container or not the boot disk comes with a persistent boot disk comes with the OS in this case it's 10 gigabytes and we can change this if we want we can allow either all cloud APIs to access this machine or just leave things as default for now and finally we have the firewall we can allow HTTP traffic and or HTTPS traffic that's web traffic in addition to this there are a lot of other options under management security disks networking and sole tenancy but for now we'll just hit create when the circle stops spinning then our virtual machine would be ready and there it is and we can see that an internal IP address has been allocated. Now this internal IP address can be used to access and to communicate with other devices and resources that are within the same zone as this VM. The external IP address can be used to connect to the internet and to connect to other resources that are outside the region or zone depending on the resource. So if we click on this VM, we can see the specific details. So we can see this, the location, the machine type, and the network interface card, the details for that, as well as the boot disk. Now we can edit this VA virtual machine by clicking edit and making changes to the original configuration. We can also add additional disks here. So if we press add new disk, then we can choose the name, description, and we can choose a type of disk that we want to add. So we can choose a standard disk or an SSD disk. Additionally, when you have when you're adding an additional disk, you can also set up a snapshot schedule for redundancy and backups. So let, let's press save for now. So now let's go back to our, so we can see our additional disk here as disk one with the size of 100 gigabytes, which is an SSD persistent disk. Let's go back to our list of instances. There's only one. 
and if you want to connect to this instance we can do so via ssh so if we click this the console window opens so from here it's the same as connecting to any virtual machine where you get a command line and you're using a debian linux system here for more details check the link in the description learn with wits labs success certified